Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a simple tutorial to share with you today using this book called A Beginner's Guide to Constructing the Universe, The Mathematical Archetypes of Nature, Art, and Science, A Voyage from 1 to 10. Today we're going to work on the Golden Spiral and I'm using this book as inspiration for this demonstration. I'm going to start out with my compass and a large sheet of paper and I'm going to set it at about one and a half inches. This size is arbitrary. It depends on how large you want to make your golden spiral in the end. I'm placing this circle in the lower right hand side of the page. I'm going to draw my circle with my compass. This is one version of how you can begin your golden spiral. I'm drawing my diameter right through the center of my circle. I'm extending my compass, setting it at the bottom of the diameter, and swinging an arc on the right and left side. I'm going to do this again by placing the compass at the top side of the diameter and swinging an arc on the right and left side where they cross that original arc. And this is going to give me the two points I need in order to bisect the diameter. And this will give me four division of a circle. Now you want to be as precise as possible because even the width of your pencil can alter the dimensions of your final square. We want to connect each of those points. And this is going to give us our square from which we can make our golden rectangle from which we can make our golden spiral. So once each of those points are connected, we can erase our arcs and our circles, and you can erase the marks on the interior of your square as well. I'm going to check the size of my square, and I am using calipers for this. And now I've done this project several times, and using a ruler just didn't cut it. I wasn't able to get as precise as measurements as I needed, and it altered the golden rectangle in the end. So using calipers really helped, and if you have them, I highly encourage you to, do, to use them. I've used my calipers to find the midpoint of our square. I'm drawing a line right through our square, and this is going to help us find the golden rectangle. I'm using my compass and setting the point at that midpoint, and then adjusting it so that I can swing an arc from the corner of the square all the way around. And once again, we'll set our compass at the top midpoint, swing an arc from the lower corner all the way around. I'm using my calipers to make sure that the distance for the top and the bottom of my square is equal. Next, I'm going to take my ruler and extend those lines at the top and the bottom in order to cross those arcs. And then once again, I'm going to connect where those arcs cross that line and draw a line. I can erase all of these extra markings. I don't need them now. And now the fun part is checking to see whether we have indeed created our golden rectangle. So with these numbers, I'm taking the small number and dividing it by the large number. So the lesser section by the larger section in order to get the lesser of the golden ratios. And we get 0.619 when the golden ratio is 0.618-0339. So pretty close. Now it's time for us to create another golden rectangle within this small rectangle. So we want to take the short distance in that golden rectangle so that we can create a square within it. So I'm using my calipers in order to measure that distance on either side. I'm marking it and that way we can get a square and another golden rectangle. So I'm going to connect both of those points and now we have a square and a rectangle within that rectangle. So now we can keep going. You can keep going as small as you can measure. So now we're going to measure the short distance and we're going to create another square within this golden rectangle. And you can continue to take measurements and check your ratio to see if you have indeed the golden ratio or the golden section. Now, as you get smaller and smaller, it is more challenging to stay accurate with your measurements and with the proportions for the golden ratio, but as you get larger, it's a little bit easier with the larger numbers. So now we have our squares and you can see it's going to go in a bit of a spiral and we're gonna try to squeeze one more square in this tiny little rectangle here. And this does make it so much easier with calipers. So if you have them, I encourage you to use them. I'm going to draw that line right there and that way we have one more tiny little square. And if you want to continue, you certainly could. And I think I'm just going to almost eyeball that last square so we want to continue making squares as 
small as you can make them before we start to move outward. So I'm going to draw parallel lines from our original golden rectangle and then I'm measuring the long side of our golden rectangle and using that measurement to create a square that is next to our original golden rectangle and now we've created another golden rectangle. So I don't have enough space on my page even though I used a large sheet of paper so I'm taping another piece of paper here and I'm going to continue making squares outward moving from left to right. So I'm constantly measuring the long side of our original golden rectangle and then using that to create a square on the edge and then that will create a new golden rectangle. When you are moving inward you are measuring the short side of your golden rectangle and as you move outward you are measuring the long side of your golden rectangle in order to get your square. So I keep having to tape more pieces of paper onto our original sheet of paper in order to continue getting larger and larger squares and very quickly it exceeds my page and I feel like this is enough to get our golden spiral and it's enough to really see how quickly the Fibonacci sequence or the golden ratio grows from a very small point. I'm going to cut out the excess piece of paper and now you can really see our squares and our rectangles and as they get smaller. So now the fun part and sometimes the challenging part is to actually construct our spiral starting from the smallest point or the smallest square that we have. And there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm going from corner to corner and I am freehanding this and I'm trying to make my pencil line quite thick so that I can sort of accommodate any imperfections in my line or in my curve I should say. And so I'm going to continue connecting uh, corner to corner for each of the squares as we spiral outwards. And this part is really thrilling to see the spiral kind of come to life because in all of the years that I have taught this in our homeschool setting, I've never understood it as well as when I have done a project like this and the experience has really helped me understand this phenomenal ratio, this golden number, this golden section, the golden proportion. It's known by many different names. So I love this project. So I encourage you to try this out if you have the opportunity. I did outline it in yellow, which for me is kind of a mistake uh, in retrospect, but at least you can really see this beautiful golden spiral and how easy it is to make with just a few tools. I hope that you'll give this project a try. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. You can find more information as well as links to all of the resources that I've used for our geometry main lesson block. You can find the link to that blog post in the description box below. And if you'd like to see what we're doing for geometry on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram and now on TikTok, a pepper and pine.